call somebody. Everybody and welcome to Lions on the Prowl. My name is Jim, and this is Marcus. What's going on, guys? This is an awesome week. <laughs> it's yeah, been it's an it's, awesome week. It's pretty nice out. So good. You know, bunch yeah. of storms yesterday. Yeah, but, but today is pretty good. Storms are nice for me. Oh, I love them. I really do. Where are we off topic? But that's okay. All right, let's start out the show with to- uh, some shout outs. Marcus, who do you have? Um, I just have one shout out today. I just want to shout out uh, Don Don. Yesterday was her birthday. Hope she had a great day. I hope she had a great day, too, and I wasn't making any jokes this week. It's, uh, I'm just trying to be nice. I'm sure she would appreciate that. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm sure she's not laughing as hard, though. That's <laughs> last week. Okay, let me see. Who do I have this week? I have Brian, Chad, and Carrie, Beth from work. Well, these people are mostly from work. Ray, Rachel, Thomas, Brianna. God, I always get her name wrong. No, you got it right. Did I get it right? Yeah. She'll kill me. That's okay. I've been dead before. Yeah, she's Just feisty. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's nice, though. All right. And Brendan, who just started listening to the show, wanted to give you a shout-out at work, and he works on wires most of the time, so his life sucks. Anyway, let's see. All right, first topic this week, we're going to go into our All Elite team. And this this week, it's from 1990 to 2000. Yeah, I'm going to let y'all know that... I was born in 92, so I'm running to the end of my knowledge here. So, <laughs> But in 92 at one year old, what, you were 93 or one? Yeah, I, I was. So, you know, so. but but I'm here today. I'm here. I'm ready to go strong. So, <laughs> so let, Marcus is going to have to do his research is what's going to happen. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see here. I'm going to do quarterback. God, quarterback sucked. I'm just being honest. Yes, they it really did. sucked. So I guess I'm going to go with Rodney Pete. Um, Scott Mitchell kind of was a disaster, but he had one good year. So I guess there just really isn't a good quarterback. Eric Kramer, or Dave Craig, would we'll throw out some names. None of those strike me as elite. Rodney Pete ended up beating us <laughs> the Philadelphia I, Eagles. <laughs> I think they were only terrible because they were wearing the the silver and blue. Yeah. Yeah. And you know there there is an it. effect that goes on like that. <laughs> so the nineteen nineties featured one guy on our team, and I'm just telling you, one dude that stood head and shoulders above the rest. So Marcus is gonna do the running back position. Are you? Are you? you want Marcus me to do is gonna back? do. Yeah. Well, as Jim said, there's only there's only one name that needs to be mentioned. The goat. For those of you who don't speak goat, that's Barry Sanders in goat language. There we go. Third in the NFL in rush yards. Ninety sevens MVP. Two thousand fifty three yards and eleven touchdowns. Mm. Sanders, in my opinion, one of the best running backs of all time, um, could stop on a dime. His direction changed, and, and the way he accelerated after he could change directions, it was like a pinball machine. <laughs> it was like bing, 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 bing. He definitely had a seventh gear, and his footwork was like he, uncomparable. Really good. The two bad huge thighs, too. I mean, his legs were huge for a running back. I mean, he looked, he, they were big. So he could go, I mean, he could plant his foot and bam, just move a different direction. That guy would be gone. Uh-oh. <laughs> and he made people, if you look at his highlight films, he made really, really good players look really average and actually really bad. <laughs> Terrible. John Lynch, Hall of Famer, safety, Tampa Bay. He just, he's, he's still wondering where Barry went. <laughs> was, it, was it Singletary for the Bears? Singletary, Richard Dent. 
I mean, just players that are like legends in the game made them look foolish. And and Barry Sanders is one of those transcending players. Yes. One of those players that brought something to the game that wasn't there before. He like the way he perfect the juke. Yes. The oh way he God. uses the spin move. Yes. Breaking tackles, his elusiveness. And one of my favorite things about Barry Sanders is how humble he was. Still is. But, I mean, he would go to the end zone like he had been there before. Oh, yeah. Would, just hand the ball to the official. His first touchdown, he, he did a touchdown dance, looked around, and was like, nah, that feels dumb. I'm never doing that again. Yep. Never did it again. Yep, never did it again. And he, he would always just hand the ball to the official. He always knew where the official was. So he would – and uh, very humble guy. His father actually said that he was not the best running back of all time. Traitor. Jim Brown. He said Jim Brown was the best running back of all time. Which Jim Brown was an outstanding running back. I'm not. I'm not debating that. He know Barry Sanders. I, I don't know. Very very good. Transcended a lot of things. And for me, um, he was a good player as well. But for my Lions, Barry Sanders was the best running back we've ever had. I didn't learn goat language from Jim Brown. <laughs> That's funny. But Barry was, he ended his career early, uh, I think. I think he was sick of the losing. Uh, He doesn't say it too much, but I think he was sick of the losing. I just think that it got to him after a while. I think his back was hurting. No, I know know he was hurt. I know football does that to you. No, I'm I'm, I'm talking about from carrying his team. (laughs) His back was hurt (laughs) from carrying his team. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. What's funny is it's like all these players that he played with, and there's just a lot of garbage. I mean, you look at some of the people on the roster, it's just a bunch of garbage. <laughs> there's there's some garbage, but I also see some gems. I do. I do. Lomas Brown. Uh, we'll, we'll get to those, I guess, because we're going to go through this uh, thing. But this whole uh, 91 season we're going to go through after a minute. But right now we're going through – the um, all elite team from 1990 to 2000. So let's go with wide receiver. I have Herman Moore. He started out in 91 when he was drafted by the Lions in the first round. He had four Pro Bowl appearances, three times first team All Pro and second team All Pro in 94, and two times he led the league in receiving and receptions, 95 and 97. He might have been the best receiver of that decade. Mm. Maybe. For the Lions, yes. Yeah. He was good. He was great. I'm not saying that. But is he a Hall of Fame player? I don't know. The man had four seasons with 1,100 yards or more. How about Michael Irvin? Michael Irvin was good. (laughs) I said maybe. I said he may be the best of the decade. No, they they had they had a lot of good ones, but and he was not a Hall of Fame player, which surprises me. Actually, I thought he would have been in the Hall of Fame, but he isn't. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it as well. But I uh, obviously uh, he didn't get in. Which what brings me to like I said last week, where the perception of our players is different than the national perception of our team. Um, but we'll save that for another discussion. Okay, so I have at tight end, I have David Sloan. He actually made a Pro Bowl appearance in 1999. He was probably the, well, we did get Pete Metzlars for a little while, and he was from Buffalo. He was pretty good, but David Sloan was probably the best tight end we had, I guess, even though we had really sucky tight ends. We didn't even have tight ends for a while because we're running the run and shoot. So yeah, so that just eliminated their it, use. It kind of eliminated for a few years anyway. I don't think we used a tight end until 93 or so, somewhere in there. Um, so I got offensive linemen. I have Lomas Brown. He was seven straight Pro Bowls at left tackle. Seven straight. He was pro football reference first team all 1990s team. 1995 first team all pro and he's in what radio now in something like that i think he's he was in espn i don't know if he is now um let's see as as far as o-line goes i have someone to mention but they're they're more of a fullback fullback that's but, fine we'll go to fullback but Corey Schlesinger, Schlesinger used to plow oh, through God, yes. defenders 
for the GOAT. He put his hat on so many people. <laughs> and he loved it. He Pancakes. loved doing it. Yeah. Pancakes. Yeah, he was, Flip them. Yeah, he was he was devastating blocker. Uh, and, and he loved what he did. He didn't mind getting getting his hands dirty, as you as so to speak. Um, he'd come in there and just he'd clear people out for Barry and uh yeah he was he was outstanding actually at the fullback position I really liked Corey and I thought he had a great attitude too when he played the game he just wanted to play the game get dirty and hit somebody (laughs) he's one of the old time folks (laughs) nothing wrong with that I used to like hitting people too (laughs) well we still do anyway I also have Kevin Glover, who went to three Pro Bowls, 95, 96, 97, all consecutively. He was very, very good. Dominic Rayola is in this era, and he was on the on last week, so I won't go too deep into him. Who do you have at uh, defensive line? Or do I you? have Robert Porche. Ooh, nice one. From 96 to 99, the man had doubled digit sacks every wow. season from nice. 96 to 99 nice. he was a three-time pro bowler in 97 99 2001 three-time all pro in 97 99 also in 2001 so very outstanding pick there <laughs> um i have not a lesser known guy but jerry ball he was nose tackle and running the three four back then he had three pro bowls 90 uh 89 90 91 i know 89 is not in the era that we're talking about but jerry ball was a was a big big boy <laughs> and ate up a lot of blocks he got some sacks too i mean played really really well in that defense yeah it's it's kind of hard for the cor- the quarterback to do anything with the ball when the nose tackle just blast the center into mm-hmm. him. Right, right, exactly. And so speaking of defensive tackles, I also have Luther Ellis. He had a two-time Pro Bowler, 1999 and 2000. So that's all of my defensive linemen. Do you have any more, or is that it? No, you pretty much covered those. All right, linebacker. Chris Spielman. And I'm going to say GOAT on this one for the Lions. I think he was the greatest middle linebacker of all time for the Lions. I mean, maybe not, but that's my opinion. Four Pro Bowls, first team All Pro, eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, ninety four. He currently does color for um, Fox. Does some of the Lions games too. But amazing. he led he led Detroit in tackling for seven consecutive seasons. Damn, and, and he is the franchise leader in career tackles. Wow. He he just brought it. I mean, he had that attitude of like Corey Schlesinger did. I just want to hit somebody. But he wasn't the tallest. He wasn't the biggest. His measurables weren't what they should have been when they when they drafted him. And yet, his heart just couldn't be measured. Sp- Spielman was a bit more choosy. He just wanted to hit the person with the ball. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, that's Schlesinger true. didn't care. He was hitting everybody. Yeah, but he was on offense, so no one had the ball. <laughs> He's just trying to clear a path <laughs> like a bowling ball. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Spielman, Spielman was, he was a ball radar. Uh, where's the ball? I'm going to get him. Yeah. I'm going to take him I'm, I'm going to say this because I know we're doing this, but Spielman, his measurables were, he wasn't the fastest guy. He wasn't, you know, like I said. And we have a guy now um, that to buy that we just got and his his measurables are kind of the same thing he's a big guy he's not very fast but he has an instinct for the ball um i'm not saying he's going to be chris spielman because i don't i don't believe that but you know here's another guy that was too small or too this or too that to play the game and yet he impacted the game like crazy i mean somewhere I mean, somewhere in sports, because you mean you see it a lot. There are always players who are undersized. Yes, you know what I'm saying less athletic, but somewhere in sports, knowledge overpowers talent or heart or heart. or heart. I, I totally believe in that because there's some players, and I think Spielman's one of them. He had a motor that just wouldn't quit. You know, not only that, but he was smart. Oh, he was smart. He was he 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 approached he the game smart. in a very intelligent manner, and it, it helped him. He knew he had to because, like you said, he was undersized. I mean, he knew it. Right. He knew he was smaller. He knew he right. wasn't that fast, but he right. did 
as well as he did because of his knowledge, because of his knowledge of the game, because of... Right, exactly. Yeah, he brought it, and he brought it with intelligence, like you said. And I just think he had the heart of a champion. It's too bad he played on the Lions. He did go to Buffalo for a little bit, which is worse. I didn't think that was possible, but... (laughs) DB, man, I got got a uh, safety. Benny Blades. Oh, I had the same safety. Oh, sweet. Um, what do you got on him? Uh, he started 125 of 126 games. Wow. So we were talking about a couple other play, b- players being durable. Iron Man. Yeah. We got another one right got here. Got another one. Um, he was a field blanket. You know, 714 tackles as a safety. Wow. Pretty good. He had one Pro Bowl in 99. He was first team all pro twice, and he was second team all pro three times. So, yeah, he was a very good player. Um, we have, um, let me see, a specialist that I wanted to mention because I think we had really good kick returners over the years and kickers. But we mentioned kickers last week, but we've had some really good kickers. We mentioned Eddie Drummond last week. Now I'm going to mention Mel Gray, number 23. Do you have him or no? I didn't, I didn't have him specifically written down. Okay. Okay. So he went to four Pro Bowls in 90, 91, 92, and 94. He was first team all pro in 90, 91, and 94 as well. Pro Football Hall of Fame, second team all 1990s team. That's something. So he made the all decade, the second all decade team. Yes, for the Hall of Fame. For the Hall of Fame. Interesting. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a weapon. I mean, every time he touched the ball, there was, there was a chance. And it reminds me a little bit of Devin Hester for the Bears because they were talking about kicking it into Lake Michigan so he wouldn't run it back. Yeah. <laughs> and they even made it a Hester oof. rule, actually, um, when they put the kickoff a little bit further. They call it the Devin Hester rule. <laughs> kind of eliminated him out of the game, actually. I thought they did that to avoid contact. Well, yeah. They also said they also were talking about that it was be, um, it would take him out of the game. Not necessarily that they did it for that purpose, but the effect was that it would go into the end zone more often. There's less kick returns. so Yeah, it's something about they want to reduce collisions. Yeah, well. The whole concussion protocol thing. Yeah. Which is a serious topic. Uh, concussions and um, ended Javid Best's career. Uh, ended a couple other players' careers. Um, difficult because it's hard to... They have everything in place to kind of diagnose it on the field now, but I still think that ramming your head into somebody else is still going to cause problems. Yeah, but what more can we do? What more can the NFL do to prevent them? I don't think they can. My my stance has always been, and some of the players have the same stance, T.J. Lang was out because of concussion. And he said, you know, I know what I signed up for. You know, I know what I'm getting paid for. Because when I, you know, later on in life, I'm going to pay for this. You know, that's that's kind of the attitude. It's like, hey, you know what? I get to play a sport for millions of dollars. You know, I have it's a dangerous sport. There's dangerous jobs out there, you know, that you know what you're getting into before you do it. And, you know, I think this is a consequence of the job. And unfortunately, like if scaffolders are way up high, some of them fall, you know, some of the rope breaks, something happens, you know. Boxing is the same way. Yeah, boxing was the same way too. Yeah, isn't boxing the only sport where you can like you can kill a man? Yeah. And, you, well, I don't know. Hockey you can probably kill somebody too. Depends on if you stab him with your skate blade. Yeah, but I'm talking about <laughs> you can like boxing. You can kill a man and go home that night. Yeah. Yeah, like, because like, you're you, not responsible. You slit for somebody's right, throat right, with no, a skate. In hockey, yep. you, <laughs> you ain't going home that yeah, night. Yeah, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> Hit him in the back of the head with a stick. Anyway, um, we we didn't overlook somebody. Eddie Murray, I had on here too. Um, Long time Lions kicker. I, and what sucks is he was called Steady Eddie, and, and we think we discussed this one time when he was uh San Francisco game where he missed the field goal, so we lost the playoff game. And that, that always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But we have, um, like you said, sent from heaven. Jason Hansen. The GOAT. Second round draft pick in 1992. 
And so this is his decade. This is his era. Um, so you have Hanson, you have Barry Sanders. Herman and if y'all want to know, Barry Sanders is the one who taught Jason Hanson go language. <laughs> Barry Barry was uh, Jason Hansen's shepherd. (laughs) Something like that. Oh, anyway. So, moving on. There was an interesting article that I read uh, yesterday and yesterday or the day before. So, talking about Kelvin Johnson. Oh, yes. I read this article yesterday. Maybe it was today. But I read this I read this article. Right. That Calvin Johnson, what would it take for Calvin Johnson to come back to the Lions and mend fences? Because the Lions have wanted to reach out to him, and Rod Wood said that was a priority this year. They wanted to reach out to him and give him a similar position to Barry Sanders as the ambassador of the Lions. And what was his response? He wants his money back. I mean, but I, mean, I would too. Yeah. So all of the, he retired early, okay, from his contract. So did Barry Sanders. So the Lions sued both of these players for their signing bonus, which was extended out, given to them in the beginning, but was extended out over a period of time. So because they didn't fulfill that contract, they owed them, and and I think Calvin's was over a million dollars. Yeah, I think he said it was 1.1. Yeah, 1.1. So (sighs) how do you treat your best players like that? I know it's a million bucks, but you spent a million bucks on some really dumbass players. I'm just being honest. <laughs> you know, he spent a million dollars on some of these trash players that we've had. You know, I'm sure Pettigrew got like a million dollars to drop the ball and not catch the ball all the time. Yeah. But you're not going to let one of the best players that you've ever had keep a million bucks and say, hey, you know what? You earned it. You're the best player we've ever had. Or you're one of the best players we've ever had. Barry so, Sanders, same thing. It's a Detroit thing. Maybe that's why we can't get yes. players to come here. Right. Right. Not only is it cold as hell here, and no one wants to be here because the weather is shit in the winter, and especially when they're playing football. Even when they're outside, you know, even you know, though they play inside, it's still crap here. I mean, you know why they call it the Dirty D, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, we know. Anyway, um so it's it, it's not an appealing town and it's not just in it's not just in the NFL. Like right. The, the NBA doesn't like Detroit. Right. They won't ha- right. have an all-star game here. Right. Like it's not just football. It's right. everywhere. It's, every, it's Detroit. It's everything. Except the Red Wings exact. But really. And the Tigers. I mean, the, the Tigers Wings, are pretty good. The Red Wings had a, a period of time where they got a lot of free agents would come there because they knew they were going to win a Stanley Cup because they were so good. Lions have never had that problem. but <laughs> I mean, the Lions haven't really had a dynasty like the Red Wings have. Yeah, they have or the like reverse the dynasty. Tigers, yeah. Or like the Tigers had. They have the reverse you know? one where they never win. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is a critical issue. Why do the Lions decide to take money away from Hall of Fame players, one Hall of Fame player, one soon-to-be Hall of Fame player, in my opinion? These are the best players that you've had, and you're going you're gonna to do that to them when they could be the face of your franchise for years to come. Barry didn't play for any other team. Calvin Johnson didn't play for another team. They only represented Detroit. So why would you do that to them? And why would you show other players how you how shitty you treated those players? I mean, I understand about the commitment, you know, the the unfulfillingness of the commitment. Yes. But what did the Lions do to help them to try to keep them committed? Nothing. They didn't, I mean, and to your point, so we have Calvin Johnson, we have Matthew Stafford. We can't add a running back. We had a problem with running back. We had Reggie Bush for one year that was good. Job at best, concussion issues, but he was a really good back. Now we have um, Kerryon Johnson. We'll wait and see. But like in the Calvin, like way before Barry Sanders, we couldn't find a damn quarterback. Now it's the reverse. It's just they just can't get it right. They have these star players, and they can't build around it to build a team around these people so that they can succeed. And we all know what 
what is needed for a good pass game. Oh, that's true. Offensive line. <laughs> a running game. <laughs> Offensive line. <laughs> exactly. We have, we have mediocre running backs. What What are teams going to do? Key in on Calvin. Exactly. He's going to get hit. He's going to get hurt. He's but when gonna, you have, he's going to get frustrated. You have to have the best running back in the entire league because of the offensive line deficiencies. You have to have one of the best quarterbacks in the league running for his life. I counted last year. Stafford had one. It's just one play. And I counted. He had 2.5 seconds to get rid of the ball. Really? <laughs> he gets in his stance. He's putting his arm back. That is about all the time he had. And it's over, man. You just, you just got smoked. Two and a half seconds. That's what? A, a three-step drop? No, you're done. Your two and a half seconds is up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you can, get, you can probably get your three, your three, your three drop in yeah, about and a second the, and a half. And getting the arm yeah, up you're in the getting air. It up, but, but that's it. You're yeah, you're it not. Out. You're not cocking it back. You're not letting it go. Not in two and a half seconds. I nope. mean, unless maybe that's why he always does that little sidearm thing. <laughs> and they avoid the, the players flick. coming at him. Yeah, yeah. Like, and and that's and he has a, a lot of different arm angles and he's done a lot of different things, but he has not had a. T- he's had one. Season of a thousand yard rusher, and he's had one season of a top ten defense in ten years, and he's had three different offensive coordinators. What three different head coaches? He had Schwartz, he had Caldwell, uh, Caldwell, and Patricia. Yep. So, I mean, poor poor team. I mean, this team drives me nuts because number one, you can't get people to get here anyway because you suck. And that's the first thing. Players come here to die. I mean, they just do. It's the end of the career. It's the last stop. You know, you're going to get a bunch of money to suck here is what it is a lot of times. Now, we just got some younger guys, and Trey Flowers only like 26 or something like that. And we got, you know, they got Jesse James. I think he's only 24, something like that. So we got some free agents that have a little life left to them this year. We'll see how that works out. And we're glad that they actually are coming to Detroit. But if you treat your players, players, the best ones that you have like shit, what do you think the mediocre ones are going to get treated like? <laughs> and this is from the top of the organization. Right. The top of the organization. Right. Like the people who their money's made on your back. Exactly. On your injury. On, on your, your injury. performance. Yep. yep. And with the concussion issue and injuries the way they are, um, and you're just saying, hey, on your way out, can you give me a million? Oh, you know. <laughs> right. What? Like, what the hell is like wrong with you? We understand we didn't do anything to keep you from constantly getting hit. Right. We understand we didn't do anything to help you be better. Exactly. Or get a winning team. Get, but we we're going to need that signing Bowl. bonus back. We didn't get you a playoff win while well, we did with Barry. We didn't, give, we didn't get you an uh, NFC championship, and we didn't get you a Super Bowl. But on your way out, could you give us a million back? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We we need that signing bonus back. Yeah, yeah. Just because you didn't yeah. stay your Yeah, you full didn't team. stay your full time and, and suffer this hell that we've created for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is kind of the way it is. That's the way I feel about it. And I think it says a lot about Detroit. I think it says a lot about why we're in the position that we are in. Exactly. And it starts from the top down. Now, this organization it wasn't Rod Wood that did this. Okay, so we we got to make that clear to everyone listening. The current regime did not do this to these players. The current regime has brought back Barry Sanders and are working hard to bring back Calvin Johnson and players like that. So maybe the culture's changing, and I'm hoping that's the way it is because now we're 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 trying to get our our guys back that represented this team in, in their era. And I've seen them make overtures to other players as well. So I'm hoping that this type of behavior changes. But when you get this mark on you, but when you're, but when this mark, it gets this mark on you. That was Tom Lawand who did that to uh, Calvin Johnson. So unfortunately, that's not Rod Wood at this point who's making those decisions. You know, well, fortunately, actually, so that we get off of that thing we've been talking about the 90 to 2000 teams i want to say something about this first before we go into something else the lions have some of the poorest luck of any team i've ever seen in my entire life i want to go through something very quickly i'm not going to take a lot of time 
The 91 team had Mike Utley and Eric Andelsick on the um, offensive line. Okay. You said that was 91? 91. Oh, I wasn't born yet. Okay. Yeah, well, you were there in spirit. No, you weren't. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, Eric Andelsick, pretty good left guard. Mike Utley, pretty darn good. He was center for a little while, and then he went to right guard. Um, I think he took over for Clover that year. I thought he was a center. But anyway, Eric Andelsick. This is the lion's luck. He's mowing the lawn at his home. An 18-wheeler goes off the road and strikes our, our left guard and kills him in the offseason. Dude's gone. Wow, that is some pretty bad luck. So not only that. So that that's one thing, and it's, it's a tragedy, right? Next thing, Mike Utley is paralyzed for life in a game. And I don't know if you remember. You probably don't. It was a guy on a, a guy on a stretcher with a thumbs up sign, you know, because he was paralyzed. He was done right then and there. Two of our offensive linemen we lose in one year. Two crazy situations. So what happened the year before that gave us such bad luck? Because um, they ain't been right since. No, I don't know. I'm just I'm saying that it's it's a crazy thing. And we had one guy that was uh, I think what year was are we a, talking? 1990, 91, 91. Yeah, but isn't that the year they went down? Yeah. 91? So what no, happened in 1990? Ni- no, 91, between 91 and 92 was off season for Eric Andelsick, and I'm not sure. So, I so think it happened? was 91. What happened? Ooh. Might have been 92. Who was flirting with a Kardashian? <laughs> well, that was Reggie Bush, but that was way, well, that was a somebody, much later. Somebody had to be doing it before that to, for us to have that kind of bad luck on oh. O-line Ooh. and to never be able to recover. We ain't recovered from that. No. So, no, it's so like who, a Barry Sanders. So who was thing. dating a Kardashian back then? That's what I, I want to know. know. I don't know about the Kardashians. <laughs> Just Get together, so we're, lions. We're gonna we're gonna talk about and uh, we're gonna bring in the maniac report for this week. And this week, um, Tim is live with us and been over there sleeping. And <laughs> we woke mm. him up, got him out of his slumber for um, the Maniac Report this week, which is going to be all of us kind of helping out here on the 1991 team that actually did something. Yeah, that actually, yeah, that year they started out on a bad note and ended up on the same bad note. They played the Washington (laughs) Redskins at the beginning of the year, got killed by Washington, uh, and then also ended getting killed by Washington, both at RFK Stadium. But this 1991 Lions was the only team that has ever won a playoff game and not only won a playoff game since the creation of the Super Bowl, they walloped the Dallas Cowboys with a system called the run and shoot. Which you Tim lost. has been a proponent of for... Ever, pretty much. Right. Because it's really the only system that's got them anywhere. With a not-so-great quarterback. That's the truth. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, the quarterback that was drafted for that was Andre Ware. He held out during training camp, and that really did end for him. Because, yeah, he never really right, had a chance. Because we had Barry Sanders. Wasn't he from Texas? Or, I mean, didn't he run the run and shoot in Houston, I think it was? Right. And, and over there, it was outstanding because he had so many yards. So they, they figured, they drafted him. They figured that the uh, uh, run and shoot, him running a run and shoot in college, he would be a perfect fit. And it made sense. Right. And it also made sense because he was a mobile quarterback. Mm-hmm. I mean, he added another dimension to the right. whole run and shoot where he could run himself. Whereas they had like the statue, Eric Kramer, <laughs> and you know, a couple uh, other guys. Ronnie <laughs> Pete. Yeah. You, you had Ronnie Pete. Ronnie Pete was actually yeah, and he, very he, mobile. And that that year when they got run, they actually got Ronnie Pete and Barry Sanders in the same year. Because Barry Sanders was the Heinzman Trophy winner. Rodney Pete was the runner up. He was at Oklahoma, wasn't he? Yes. And then Thurman Thomas. He, he was, he was uh, running behind Thurman Thomas mm-hmm. from uh, Buffalo. Right. Yeah. I remember. I'm hopefully remembering that right. <laughs> <laughs> so, 91 Lions. Yep. Okay. So, we got Rodney Pete at quarterback. We've got Barry Sanders, the greatest of all time. 
<laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Robert Clark at wide receiver, Terry Greer, Richard Johnson, Jeff Campbell, no one that really – uh, oh, that's ninety. That's ninety. Hold on, Mike Farr, w- w- Willie Green, <laughs> Willie Green, the touchdown machine. If I remember right, mm-hmm. Brett Perriman, really good wide receiver. Oh yeah, and uh, this is the year they draft Herman Moore, right. so he's kind of involved in this, but mm-hmm. not a whole lot. I think he only got like one hundred and forty some yards that whole year. So uh, Robert Clark is the other one. So Lomas right. Brown, Eric Andelsick, Kevin Glover, Mike Utley. Eric Sanders, our, our offensive line. Right. Um, Jerry Ball is anchoring the nose tackle position. Mark Spindler, Dan Owens. Uh, we got Spielman in the linebacking oh, core. Yeah. Ray Crockett went on to win a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. So yeah. he was on our team. Benny Blades, we've gone through him. Eddie Murray and Mel Gray. So I'm just going over. And William White. Actually, William White was okay, too. Mel Jenkins was decent. I don't remember the other linebacker guys but tracy hayward dennis gibson who was in the rock and roll express mm-hmm. if i remember <laughs> 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 yeah but uh and and that year we also did have a great defense too because you did have mel gray that's uh, was uh, on defense i know but i meant to say ray crockett, ray crockett. i i remember as um the cornerbacks we Oh, you had Ray Crockett and you had Mel- Melvin Jen- Jenkins. Oh yeah, yeah. and they, we Jenkins. had a lot of takeaways. They yep. would go ahead and intercept the ball quite often. So that was good. Yes. I mean, we, we did uh, we did go twelve and four. Mm-hmm. Um, the run and shoot. Um, people that don't know about the run and shoot offense, uh, basically it's a spread offense, no tight ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, one running back usually. Sometimes they had another, uh, like a, a wide receiver right. that would sit back a little bit, but usually a four to five receiver set. So like a slot back? Yeah, mm-hmm. like a slot back. Exactly. And what it would do was spread out defenses because Barry had like eight men in the box right. all the time. So, mm-hmm. I mean, how else do you stop a goat? <laughs> right. With a whole legion of players, and then it didn't even work. Yeah. <laughs> you see so many videos where you're going gotta through get like a, eight guys. Got to get a wolf. Gotta but, get a wolf. Like but the one, one. Uh, the, the one knock about the run and shoot though was that they would score so quickly. Right. So so your defense would not have enough time to recover. Yeah, and that was that was one of the things. Yeah. And the other thing was that because our de- you said our defense was great that year. I don't remember it that way. I, I really believed that, and we might have. I mean, just the way I remember it is, it seemed like we had to score on every play. So it mm-hmm. seemed like it put more pressure on that offense, you know, to to score because right. we weren't stopping anybody. Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. I mean, I, I could but, be wrong. About but that. At, but at that particular time, it was where you had, you know, we we had special teams like you said. We had Mel Gray yep. that would run up, ki- run kick kickoffs back for touchdowns yep. or great yardage. Yep. You had you had the defense that did go ahead and they did get the takeaways that we need needed we also had chris spielman on that team yeah so it it was really you know i mean the o-line could have been better but you know at that time we still had ali and we still had uh andersick was still alive at that time yeah um for that year mm -hmm. so it it was really uh something that worked but then right after they you know got to the nfc championship (laughs) and worked yeah, it's it just, you know, Washington had us figured out. They were too big. They were using a lot of bump and run coverage. Mm-hmm. So they, they were using a lot of corners that would stop our guys at the line. Right. So that hurt us. Barry wasn't running for nothing. Yeah. I mean, they had some really big defensive linemen. Yeah. And it, it, they swallowed us up. Mm-hmm. They just did. So, you know, after that season, they said, oh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just tweak the run and shoot some. And unfortunately – what happened after that was, yeah, they, they, they basically, the next yeah, year. they they basically threw it away. They couldn't get quality tight ends. You know, they no right. No, they, they built this team for the run and shoot, shoot, and then they changed it to a running I formation, right. fullback, tight ends, full deal. And it's hard to change a team from one thing to another. We're experiencing right. that now. Mm-hmm. You know, we went from the four three to the three four hybrid defense. Right. So 
I mean, we didn't have the players mm-hmm. for that. Now we're starting to accumulate the players to actually play this defense yes. and the offense. So we just changed offensive systems again. Mm-hmm. So now we're trying to bring in players that will work for that system. So it's a process. But I think the Lions, the, the, what they do is they never – they never are patient enough right. with the process. Yeah. And uh, really, why Coach Cardwell was was gone so quickly, I think it was – he was not Quinn's type of man, type of offense coordinator. Or not, I mean, uh, coach. Yeah. Uh, my thing is is that uh, I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. He always wanted to bring Patricia, and that's, right. my, that's my belief. And Patricia had one year on his contract, kind of a wink nod type thing to him, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, as soon as you're done there, I want you as the head coach." So, what do you think? Caldwell was kind of a lame duck, right? Yeah, and you know, yeah. he he said I'd go ahead and evaluate evaluate him, but I think he just wanted to just hold off until Patricia was ready. Yeah. All right, yeah. that sounds good, and we we're gonna wrap up that that segment of um, the Maniac Report for this week. Uh, we got a couple more things with me and Marcus to talk about before we end the show. We got about five, four minutes left in the show. So let's talk about some injury news. Um, specifically, the wide receiver position, where we're missing um, both Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. Wow. Making uh, Danny Amendola <laughs> our number one receiver right now. I mean, Danny Amendola is good, he runs good routes. He does. Um, but he's not going to be able to do it by himself. No. No, I don't know how long-term these injuries are. Austin Bryant is recovering from a pectoral injury, which he played through the entire season last year. And they did surgery on him in January. He's still not cleared to uh, participate yet. But we're thinking he's going to be back by the start of preseason, somewhere in there. I don't know exactly. Because they never let us know. It's another thing about the Lions I hate. Because they right. never let us know what the injuries are and how long they're going to be out. Uh, mm-hmm. They say it's an advantage because, well, guess what? Then the, the other team can't prepare for us. Well, obviously it's not working because <laughs> you ain't <laughs> won shit in years, and yet you still want to keep your fans, the people who pay the money to see this team, in the dark about who they're going to see each week. Bad stamina, Lions. Bad stamina. It really is. It, right. There's so many things about this organization that drive me crazy, and mm-hmm. that's one of them. That's one of them because I remember one year when it was, uh, I think it was, oh, God, what was his name? DeAndre Levy. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, he's going to play. He's going to play. He's going to play. And never played. And never did. I remember that. <laughs> Every I'm week. Right. He's on the sideline. Is he going to warm up? Nope. Mm-hmm. Oh, looks like he's not playing this week. And it was an entire season right. of that BS. But. But you you could actually see that with Ziggy Ansa because we always knew he wasn't going to play. Right. Well, Ziggy Ansa, yeah. the same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Got a good one there. Yeah. But this is a problem with the Lions and the communication to the fans and the people that support them and basically write their checks. Um, well, kind of, because Ford's behind them. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they got a lot of money. But anyway, it drives me nuts that they have to keep Top secret information because this is going to give us such an advantage over the other team that our guy ain't playing. It makes a lot of sense to me. It really does. I I think we have have talked about that before in previous shows. Like, where is it to sell more t- season tickets? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, sell tickets to a uh, regular game. You right. think Calvin Johnson's playing? This is a while back, and then he's not playing because they held him out at like the last minute. And mm-hmm. Nobody knew what the hell was going on, right? <laughs> and so you you paid good money to see this team at full strength, and then of course you know you're let down like you're always let down with this team. And speaking of disappointments, this show is almost coming to a close. And. Since we're ending here, I just want to remind everyone that I will not be here next Sunday. It is my birthday weekend, so I will be off enjoying myself, probably extremely hungover, hopefully, um, and oh missing boy. all of you, of course. Of course. And also, we are planning a live show. Yes. We want you, we go, we want you guys to be able to interact with us. We want you guys to be able to ask us questions and just be involved in our conversation. So we'll have more details to come with that in a few weeks. All right. Thanks, Marcus. And Tim, take us home. Okay. Well, once again, thank you, everybody. And always remember, listen to Lions on the Prowl. Go Lions. Lions on the Prowl. One pride.